This episode is brought to you by The Last Day on Earth Survival. Create your character and survive amongst a post-apocalyptic zombie wasteland. Rebuild civilization and construct a sanctuary out of the rubble to protect yourself from the undead and crazy raiders. Collect resources and craft new weapons, armor, and traps, starting with weak spears that upgrade into automatic rifles. Then take them to battle against the deadly threats that lurk around the wasteland. Take on bunkers where there is a boss to defeat, but remember to prepare by getting the right amount of weapons, clothes, and first aid kits. In Last Day on Earth, you can also take on the challenge of building vehicles like a fast motorbike and find a German Shepherd puppy and watch him grow into a big dog for company. Download Last Day on Earth via our link in the description below and play now. Now, talking of survival in difficult situations, let's see how Yoshie Shiratori survived one of the toughest prisons in Japan and escaped it into the freezing Hokkaido prefecture. Yoshie Shiratori the convict who escaped prison using a bowl of miso soup. Abashiri Prison in the Hokkaido Prefecture of Japan opened during the Meiji era in 1890. It was one of the new prisons built to accommodate the growing number of criminals following the abolition of the death penalty in 1882. In winter, it's a bitterly cold place, with the local lake freezing over and thick fog regularly engulfing the area. In its entire history, only one man has ever escaped. And that was Yoshie Shiratori. He was born in 1907 in the Aomori Prefecture, which is the northernmost part of the Tohoku region in the land of the rising sun. Shiratori was the product of a broken home and fell into a life of petty crime at a young age. He spent much of his adult life in prison. Between 1933 and 1947, he escaped from prison no less than four times, but the one he was most famous for was his escape from Abashiri Prison. It was 1944 and the war was going badly for Japan. All its earlier territorial gains in the conflict were rapidly being retaken by the Allies. And to make matters worse, the Americans had just started its strategic bombing of the Japanese mainland. Shiratori had ended up being transferred to Abashiri as he had escaped from his two previous prisons. The first was from Aomori Prison near his hometown, where he was imprisoned in 1933 on a robbery and murder charge. Life inside Japanese prisons in those days were harsh as the system focused solely on punishing prisoners and made no attempt at reforming them. For prisoners, brutal beatings and sadistic punishments by the guards for the smallest infractions were an everyday occurrence. Shiratori quickly grew to hate the unfairness of the whole prison system, and three years later on a particularly stormy night, he managed to escape by picking his cell door with a piece of wire he had gotten off a wooden water bucket. He then arranged several floorboards to give the impression to the guards that he was still laying in his bed. Shiratori was on the run for a whole three days before he was recaptured. He was sentenced to life imprisonment for escaping and stealing supplies from a hospital. Then in 1942, during World War II, he was transferred to Akita prison and placed in solitary confinement for extended periods of time. More brutal torture by the guards continued. The regular torture was so harsh, in fact, that in one instance he was nearly beaten to death by the guards. Shiratori kept it a secret that he could get out of his handcuffs and that he was an excellent climber from the guards. While in the confined space of solitary confinement, he noticed the vent in the ceiling was rotting away. Every night he would roll up a futon and scale the walls to weaken the rotting wooden frame, holding the vent, and return to the floor when the guards checked up on him. One night, using a storm to disguise the noise and after removing his handcuffs, he managed to escape by climbing up his tall cell wall one last time to loosen the air vent for good and climb out of it. Though within a few months, he was recaptured. He had gone to the home of a guard from the prison who was kind to him whom he trusted. Shiratori was seeking fairness to the harsh treatment from the other guards during his time in prison. He was fed and given shelter, but while in the bathroom, the guard consequently turned him in to the authorities. As punishment, he was transferred to the isolated prison at Abashiri in Hokkaido Prefecture, in the north of the country, where the worst prisoners were held, and three years were added to his sentence of life imprisonment. The conditions of Hokkaido gave the prison a fearsome reputation. Even if an inmate escaped, he faced certain death due to its remote location, the cold freezing temperatures, wild predators like the Higuma bear, and the difficulty in getting food and other resources. 
In the prison, convicts would sleep on an uncomfortable wooden bed and were awoken by the guards by a bang of the stick against the log pillow. In these extreme conditions, the convicts in Abashiri prison were put on exhausting labor-intensive projects such as road work, construction, farming, and mining. In this situation, Shiratori was placed in more sophisticated handcuffs made specially for him after his previous escape. The next two years must have gone by very slowly for Shiratori, especially as he knew if he didn't do something about it, he would be spending the rest of his life in prison. Then, in the summer of 1944, his behavior started to become a little strange. He had been placed in solitary confinement due to his previous escape attempts and was now being fed in his cell. Every morning, he would spit his prison breakfast of miso soup all over the metal doorframe of his cell, especially at the food tray slot in the door. He also dabbed some on his handcuffs and leg cuffs. Perhaps this odd behavior went unnoticed by the prison guards, or maybe they thought Shiratori did not care for the traditional miso soup of fermented soybeans with salt and koji fungus that he was being served every day. But it was all a part of a clever escape plan by Shiratori, as miso soup has a high concentration of salt in it. So as the weeks went by, this salt had slowly weakened and corroded the metal screws and bolts in the slot in the cell door where the guards would put his food tray every mealtime. Salt reacts violently with iron. This is because the combination breaks up the oxygen molecules resulting in accelerated rusting, causing the iron to lose electrons and the oxygen to gain electrons. So by the night of August 26th, the screws and bolts in his handcuffs and leg cuffs and the edges of the iron door feeding slot to his cell had started to become warped. So Shiratori later that evening took advantage of the now strictly enforced blackout and made his escape. He stripped down to his underwear and squeezed himself through the feeding slot, but he had to dislocate both shoulders to do so. He managed to stay on the run, living in the wilderness and hunting for food for the next two years. He was now aware that the war was over and headed to Sapporo. Here he was recaptured after he had a scuffle with a farmer over some food that ended with the man being stabbed and killed by Shiratori. Shiratori claimed it had been an accident and he had simply been trying to defend himself but the court found him guilty of murder and his life sentence was changed to the death penalty. At this time, the Japanese authorities were taking no chances and sent him off to Sapporo High Security Prison. There, while awaiting execution, he was placed in a specially designed cell with reinforced walls and a reinforced door, along with six armed guards who were assigned to watch over him and now he was under constant surveillance 24 hours a day. The days went by slowly for him as he waited for his death penalty to be carried out and by 1947, the guards had become complacent, convinced the cell holding him was truly escape-proof. This lax security allowed Shiratori to make his fourth prison break. He had unlocked the bolts of his cell's floorboards, removed some of them, and over the months, dug a tunnel under the prison to freedom using his food bowl. The following year, Shiratori decided he didn't want to live his life on the run and took the brave step and handed himself over to the police. Luckily, the court recognized in all four of his prison escapes and recaptures, he never once used violence in any way. So they changed his death sentence to 20 years imprisonment. They also acceded to his request to be imprisoned in Tokyo. He became a model prisoner in Fuchu Prison, and 14 years later in 1961, he was given parole and released. Shiratori never went back to crime. He briefly reunited with his daughter in Aomori Prefecture and thereafter traveled the country in search of work, mostly in the construction industry. He died of a heart attack in 1979 at the age of 72. And today, part of the prison is a museum dedicated to the history of this correctional facility and contains a display showing how Shiratori escaped back in 1944, an enduring memory of a man who could not be contained. Big thanks to our sponsor for this episode, Last Day on Earth, Survival. Download Last Day on Earth via our link in the description below and play now.